somebody who shows some disdain for Washington. Well, ho hold on. Some disdain for Washington? I mean, let's just talk about Washington for a second, okay? Look, you know, Washington, a lot of these people are on spin cycle. You know, New Yorkers are on rinse cycle. You see the difference? Okay, so I'm going to tell you the truth. You know, and people don't like that in Washington. Oh. Are those women's shades? That's what I want to know, okay? Because I was like, I didn't how tall you are. Could you imagine I... if I had your height, the damage I could have done? Well, I'm doing whatever you're doing. Okay, let's go. All right. Uh, What's up, man? How are you? The thing I told the president, quote unquote, I said to the president, we said, I'm going to give you the job. He said, great. I said, these guys are going to shit their pants. I said, let them. Let them. You, could be an you had a very building. strong 11 days in that building. I had, I had a strong 11 days it's in that very... building. 954,000 seconds, but I enjoy being in New York, and some things are right for people, some things are not. And I really want, this is one of the things I really want to talk to you about, because I really think you understand this at a New York level. Like, Am I getting invited like, back, by the way? I mean, the food is fantastic. I'm loving the food. How long do you know Michael Cohen? It's a good question. Um, I met Michael Cohen for the first time in either 2011 or 12. We were doing a telethon uh, for Governor Mitt Romney. Are you friends? you think of yourself as a friend? I do consider him a friend. I'm going to be out there trying to help him. You're a lawyer. Recovering. recovering so, lawyer. so I know you know what, what taking the fifth means. I don't know all the facts of the case. Let me but, tell you something. Pause on this for a second. You want to know it's what I told short, Michael? It's an, yes, I do. Is get in a closed room with your attorney, tell him everything. Tell him the 100% yeah. naked, uh -huh. unvarnished truth. Yeah. He's way more objective than you, and listen to his strategy to help you. Right. And I talked to him yesterday, and I see more optimism there. I see him a little more relaxed. I think he's feeling more resiliency. But why is that? It takes a May 1, too. Well, I mean, we're going to just enjoy ourselves while we're here. There's a lot of discussion about whether he might turn on the president. Let's not take away from you the word. You don't mind if I meet my brother. Right? No, I don't mind at all. Do you, do you think there's a substantial chance that Michael Cohen will end up cooperating with federal so, authorities against the president I, of the United States? I, I don't think the president did anything right. that with Michael yeah. that Michael needs to quote unquote flip. Yeah. And I think Michael's a loyal guy. And I think Jacob. So like is he getting a burger or no? No. Why yeah. do you think the president's talking about pardons so much all of a sudden? Well, I know what you think. You think he's talking about pardons because he's going to try to send a message to people that have worked for him that don't worry, I'm going to pardon you. I know that that's what you think. That would be a reasonable but, inference. But I think that that's a very high threshold. I don't think the president is just going to wantonly pardon people because they work for him. In fact, if anything, I think there'd be way more scrutiny related. I don't think I don't, he's going to pardon anybody who works for him. I think I he would think only pardon people who might implicate him in committing a crime. Okay, well, that's your thought, but I, I don't think he's going to use that pardoning power so why is he talking about pardoning so why is he talking about pardoning so why is he talking about pardoning so much well i think he likes the power that he has to pardon yeah. and he recognizes that the reason why you've had that power dating back to the roman republic yeah. is that sometimes there's been injustices done yeah. and sometimes things have happened where uh, you want to have that authority. I understand. I understand you, what, you don't want to I understand. listen. You're on Missile Lock. You're on Missile Lock. You're giving me you're, an essay. You're, 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 you're giving no, me an you're, essay about the power of the pardon. You're on Missile Lock. I'm why you think the president is talking about pardoning people pardon, pardon so much. And you want me to say he's talking about I pardons you to give because, me because... I want you because, to give me because, your because, interpretation of why well, he's I'm talking about power pardons. I'm trying to give you my interpretation, but you don't want to listen. I'm giving you my interpretation. You just now told me like why the power of the pardon is powerful and why it's important. I'm asking you why Donald Trump I just told you why, but you don't want to listen. I'm trying to listen again. Say right, it again. Let me, let me say it again. It's on his mind right now let me, because let me, of what? Let me, let me say it again. He's a unique guy. Most presidents wait till the end of their turn to pardon people. He's decided to pardon people now. You want to say that he's trying to send a message to Michael Cohen. Hey, pal, I just pardoned Scooter Libby. I'm going to pardon you. Relax. That's what you're trying to say. I think the threshold is going to be very, very high to pardon anybody that, that, that is that close to the president. Look at the way the president's behaving, you know, both the, the, the tweets the appearance on Fox News, that doesn't, to you, betray a certain level of agitation and concern about the about Michael Cohen in the Southern District and how that might turn out for him? Let me tell you how this works, yeah. okay? But I mean, I think just on its kind of on the face of it, he seems a little wigged out by it. Ah, uh, like, he's Donald J. Trump, dude. Let me tell you how this works. I, I tap you. Yeah. He turns around with the howitzer, yeah. and he starts shooting howitzer ballistic projectiles at him. Doesn't he do that? 
Yeah, he's been known to. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you could read into that and say, wow, he must be dead to rights here. That's why he's reacting this way. Right. But I think what he's saying right now, you're hitting me. I'm going to take you all on and hit you. This is the NFL of verbal contact. The smashing, the hitting. Boom, boom, boom. He is the toughest son of a bitch that I have ever met in my life. Right. He's literally a human Pac-Man. He's just, bah, 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 bah. I'm taking down everybody. I mean, that's what's going on. Just go back to the, the, this theme we've had. The president's trying to elevate. He's trying to be, you know, man of the world. Yes. But it seems in some ways like, as much as he wants to have big achievements on the global stage, it feels to me like his passion, like where he gets most emotionally engaged, is on the stuff that pisses him off. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he loves it, though. Right. I'm not being honest yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. I think he's aggravated by it, and I think he's distracted by it. And I think he would way more enjoy the negotiation process with the North Koreans or the Iranians or the trade deal than dealing with this nonsense. But he feels it's necessary for survival. Are we doing shots after this, or are we just... No. Uh, I may need a shot after this.